Well, hello there. How are you? Welcome to Insuring Your Wellbeing. This is Dennis James, the bike and dance and insurance man with various insurance planning. And I am glad you're here today. It's going to be a great day today. It's going to be a great topic and we're going to learn a lot and enjoy ourselves. So why don't we get started here? All right. Today's topic is going to be on, uh, it's called short-term medical plans, policies, uh, and the focus is going to be on home health care and facility care. And with those types of plans, you know, there also is individual policies that uh, we could talk about, but mainly I want to focus because of long-term care insurance. Uh, we want to talk about these types of plans, you know, the advantages like getting a home health care policy. And when I say short term, these are normally policies that are, that are going to cover you for a year. Now, uh, from a lifetime point of view, you could use it for, you know, a couple years, depending on how you're u- using the benefit. All right. One of the things with these types of plans, they're affordable in a lot of cases. Uh, their underwriting is a whole lot different than you would receive if you were applying for, let's just say, a traditional long-term care policy or a um, uh, what they call a link benefit, a life insurance with a extension, a new uh, life, long-term care insurance on it or a long-term care rider. Um, and so that's what I want to get into here because of the underwriting is very minimal. All right. So if you're struggling with certain health conditions that maybe uh, you would not be insurable for when it comes to uh, a comprehensive traditional plan, uh, you know, or life insurance with uh, like that rider, then this could be a great fit for you. Uh, you know, for one thing, it goes up to a lot of these policies will go up to age 90. So uh, that's for sure. You know, you're not going to be getting those policies uh, with a traditional plan. Normally, those will cover you up to uh, usually 79. Uh, the thing with any type of insurance is always better to get it sooner than later. Uh, when we're talking about these kind of home health care policies or these... Um, uh, the facility plans or those types of plans, you know, usually it's age 35 to 89. All right, so um, that can tell you a lot right there because as we get older, we know that uh, our health can change. Obviously, it can change at any time. You don't have to wait till you're 35. It can change at any time, any age. So... Um, One of the things um, with that, like I said, is lenient underwriting. You know, it's going to be one to three questions. Uh, It's going to be simplified, what they call simplified underwriting. And a lot of times what they're going to be asking is, you know, are you confined to a hospital or a nursing home? You know, are you receiving hospice care? You know, you know, or in a wheelchair, those types of questions. Or it could ask, one of the things that that can can matter, uh, <clears throat> have you had a heart attack in the last 12 months or heart surgery or any kind of kidney failure or stroke in the last 12 months? A lot of times if that's the case, uh, you may or may not get, get a policy. It depends on the insurance carrier. Uh, or they'll put what they call pre-existing conditions. All right, they're going to take you, but they're not going to cover you for uh, you know, the first 12 months, it could be six months, it could be 12 months. Uh, and then, you know, if you have no issues, then of course the policy will kick in, uh, for that particular service. That doesn't mean it's not going to cover you for other services, uh, within the policy. Okay. Um, what well, it's, how do you qualify these for these types of plans? It's just like your traditional or any, type of uh, linked life with the, or annuities with uh, long-term care insurance. Uh, and that is 
that those triggers, the two triggers is the two, all right, the activities of daily living. That's when you need assistance with two of the six, and that is your um, bathing, eating, transferring, getting in and out of bed, that type of thing, right? Continence, toileting. Uh, did I miss anything there? Um, so the, the two of the six, all right? And then cognitive. Right, so that is when uh, you're struggling with um, Alzheimer's or dementia, uh, Parkinson's, those types of things, all right? And that's where uh, these policies will come in. And they'll, they'll have a trigger where, where you're going to need help for at least 90 days, and those are going to are gonna put you in force. And just like anything, you know, uh, you have to qualify to be to start receiving benefits. Now, one of the things with uh, these home care policies, uh, a lot of times you can get them as a standalone, alone, and then you could, or it could be a policy that comes with the home care, meaning any type of service at home when it comes to uh, homemaking services, um, hospice services, intermediate, where you have physical the therapists coming in, any types of services, um, you know, where you ha- need help with your uh, ADLs, activities of daily living, that type of thing. Um, that's where these policies will kick in, and they were gonna, and they're going to cover you. And the way that works is the benefit amounts can be anywhere from twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollars a week. All right, so think about that. So if you if you got fifty two weeks, and let's just say you're getting the to your you know you're going to receive twelve hundred a meet uh, a week. All right, that comes to giving you around sixty two thousand four hundred dollars of a policy uh, benefit amount for that year. <clears throat> All right, which is not bad. Uh, you know, I mean, let's just say uh, you know you you take out up to fifteen hundred a year. So that, again, um, is going to give you $78,000, all right? So um, it's going to cover you. Now, keep in mind, uh, they do, if you wanted to, as an optional rider, you could get a, what they call simple or compounded inflation. Uh, as an example, like 5%, all right? So if inflation, it'll keep up with inflation and that type of thing. So let's just say you take it out today and 15 years down the road, you go to use it. Um, it's going to grow because of having either one of those. Uh, obviously, if you have the compounded uh, inflation, it's going to cost you more. Uh, the simple isn't going to cost as much, but um, it's better than having nothing. You know, it's really these kind of policies, you know, you want to think like everything, you know, what's up? Uh, affordable, meaningful plan for you. It has what they call care coordination. A lot of them have that. And that's when you're going to need, um, you know, where they'll help you find, they'll schedule, they'll manage, you know, services for you to make it easy for you and your family. Uh, because obviously anytime there's an extended care event, you know, that can become emotionally uh, you know, physically, financially burdened to families. And that's why, you know, having a, a plan in place, and that's where that care coordination comes into place. Pretty much all the policies have those today um, when it comes to long-term care insurance, period. All right, you're, you're going to find that's very available. And if your agent, he should have a lot of um places, networks, and opportunities that he can help you when it comes to that in your own community. All right. I know as an insurance advisor, I'm very connected with all the home health care, assisted living independent facilities, um, when it comes to community houses, adult daycare centers. All right. And, but, you know, they're, they're out there to serve. And then... Um, when it comes to waiting periods, they're kind of normal, or what we would call elimination periods, and those could be, you know, zero days, 20 days. Uh, you know, they're, 
they, they, they can vary, but a lot of those on the short term are uh, like a zero day. So once you qualify, you can start receiving benefits. So that's a nice, nice benefit. If you wait 20 days, well, then obviously uh, it's going to cost you a little less. I don't, I never see that as being a big difference in premium, though. Um, um, as an example, between the zero and 20 days to wait before you can start collecting. The benefit periods can be uh, 13 weeks. All right. I mentioned, you know, 26 weeks, 52 weeks. All right. So one of the things, too, now you could look at them as they'll help you from a cost point of view where you can pick out a, a daily increment. So let's just say, um, for your benefit period, you know, 30 days, 45 days, 60 days, 90, 180, or 360 days, all right? So let's just say you want, want some to cover you for 180 days, right? So um, that's, that's very uh, helpful and beneficial and can uh, be something that uh, takes a lot of pressure and stresses off family members, and it for sure gives you a peace of mind uh, that way. And um, then also that works on the benefit amounts too, right? I talked to you about earlier how uh, you can also take those in increments. You know, say you want $50 for home care and you for your facility care, you want $200, uh, and that, those are daily amounts, right? So it's going to pay you that daily amount. Uh, now, one of the things with these, these are almost always indemnity plans, cash plans. So they're going to pay you, right? Uh, if you want it sent to like a facility, you can do that. But a lot of people like the amount to come right to their mailbox, all right, or to, uh, your guardian, whoever's kind of like looking after you, that type of thing. Now, um, one of the things with that, uh, a lot of them have what they call restoration benefits. And that what that means that, let's just say you don't use the benefit for uh, six months. Well, it'll, rest it'll restore and it'll start over, right? So as an example, let's just say you had that benefit amount and, you know, I had mentioned how you had the 78000 a year. And you used, uh, let's just say you used sure 30000 of that. Well, that 30000 uh, would restore after six months, right? So it would be like starting over for you. So, you know, that obviously is a nice benefit. Uh, they have spousal discounts. A lot of people... When you have a husband and wife and you go on at the same time, they have what they have a spousal discount. All right. Um, so, you know, nice feature. You know, uh, I think it's always good anytime you can get, uh, you know, a couple together to, uh, you know, you're, you're going to get a discount that way. Uh, you know, another thing, when, when these policies are being written, uh, you know, you can do paper, but almost everything today, this is 2024, is done electronically. That doesn't mean that there isn't paper available. So if there's a time in need for that, then your agent should be more than willing to take the time. Uh, but of course, by the time it gets to the insurance carrier, it may not as be as sharp and clean. If you have special writing like me, that is... Um, Thank God for uh, the electronic apps. Um, <laughs> if you know what I mean. You know how sometimes you can't read doctors? Well, I'm not a doctor. I'm in medical, but I'm a doctor in being the bike and dance and insurance man, so I can be a little shaky, and uh, um, I've never been a superstar at uh, my printing or writing. But, you know, God blesses us in different ways, and, so I, uh, I do my best in practice, and I like to do everything electronically. And the carriers like that also. Okay, now, as far as, you know, one of the things that when you have these home health care policies or the facility policies, you can get um, what they call hospital. You can get these 
optional riders on there, okay, or what I would call riders <clears throat> that the insurance carrier will offer, all right? And so, you know, there's anywhere from four to six in big insurance carriers that are really A-rated carriers that kind of specialize in these particular ancillary type types of policies uh, based off what we're discussing today. And a lot of them have what they call a hospital indemnity. Now, you know, something like that means that they're going to pay you cash if you end up in the hospital. So let's just say that you, just for the admission, if you end up in the hospital, uh, you could get, you know, for a, a qualified reason, you could get up to 3000 There's different daily increments you can pick, right? So, um, and then if you're their hospital, say, let's just say you want, um, you know, you pick, it could be 500 it could be 1000 1500 2000 um and that's going to co- that's going to cover you for your hospital stay and outpatient surgery they also have that so if you're in the hospital now obviously you pay additional for them benefits but we know with the way the cost of medical care is today and we're talking about you know high deductibles right I know from selling a lot of health insurance in the past that, you know, a lot of it's passed on to the consumer, right, the insured. And that means the way you control costs is by raising the deductibles. Back in the day when you used to have a 250 or $500 deductible, well, today to be more realistic, it's more like a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollar deductible, and then you have a eighty twenty after that. So you're out of pocket max, right? If you're in the hospital and you have something serious happen, right? It, you know, you might you might pay six, seven thousand dollars before that particular major medical covers you at a hundred percent, and that's where these types of hospital plans, indemnity plans, come in place. And they're very cost effective, okay? It, because they're cost effective, um, it's going to for sure give you a peace of mind if you end up in the hospital because it's going to turn around and it's going to pay you cash right away, maybe to pay for those deductibles or any other reasons you need to use that money. And then they also have what they call, and this is a big one here, okay. cancer, critical illness. Heart attacks, right? Now, who doesn't know somebody that's always going through that, right? The cancer's a big one. I mean, you know, it, it just, I don't know what it is, but um, all I realize is, as I've even gotten older, but I, I guess it doesn't have to play anything with age because, it, it, right, it just people, I think of my own neighbors and I think of close friends in my small groups, uh, with cancer, you know, they're being a lot more treatable today than they've ever been. Right. Um, but at the same time, when you have a cancer policy, it could be only a cancer policy in place. Uh, they're going to pay you a cash amount based off the type of cancer it is and the amount you choose to take out. All right. And then of course, heart attacks and strokes, Right, so you could get just a heart attack and stroke policy, and that again is going to be paying you uh, a, a you know a daily amount. It could be anywhere from five thousand dollars up to seventy five thousand dollars <throat> for any of those. You know, let's just and you know a lot of a lot of the policies do have the cancer, heart attack, stroke in there, and so that is for sure uh, a peace of mind to. You know, a lot of times you'll hear that in the market also as critical illness. All right, it's the same thing. Usually those are more in group settings when they call it critical illness plans. Uh, And then uh, also with these types of policies, you can get what they call uh, dental care, vision, hearing. All right, and um, so, you know, a lot of times... They work a lot like uh, group plans or, and they're going to, you know, they could cover you for um, preventative right away. Usually you're going to have a hundred dollar deductible and then, you know, they're going to cover you anywhere from a thousand dollars per 
year or $2,000 max per year. So if you have a bunch of dental services done, uh, you know, those can be beneficial. Keep those teeth nice and clean. And when it comes to getting, you know, eye exams and all that, they cover it. Eyewear, hearing aids, contacts, that type of thing, right? You're going to be paying a premium. Uh, You're going to either get a discount, so you're going to have some type of a copay, you know, a $10 copay to get an exam, just depending on the type of coverage you have. Uh, but then again, see, these are just optional riders that you can add to the policy or you can just get on your own, all right, if you felt like you, you wanted to do that. Um, so, you know, it's interesting because we've talked a lot about uh, how home health care or assisted living or facility care, which is for assisted living and nursing homes. Usually when you have these types of plans, they can help keep you out of nursing homes. Uh, But at the same time, it does have that. And we know it's very costly. And so um, the whole peace of mind, keep in mind when you get these policies, you're obviously, you know, you're going to give yourself some security there, but you're really doing it for your loved ones. All right, you think about it. When you do not have a plan, right, that one, that stream of income's got to come some, from somewhere. Where's it going to come from? You know, who's going to take care of you? Is it going to be, usually it's a loved one. It's a family member. That's normally who it is. Or maybe you don't have a, a family member, so that's going to be a neighbor. All right, so, you know, you take the time. Uh, you know, I would, you explore these kind of plans and, um, you know, you go Sorry, with, you, you go with what's affordable and I, it's interesting. I have an Apple watch and it just likes talking back. So, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. <coughs> it's, all it's all good. Um, term life insurance. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> So sorry. Uh, Term insurance, right? A lot of these plans, you can get term insurance from age 20 to age 70. You know, some of them, I think you can even get a little older than that, but that's kind of the the norm. After after age 70, to to buy term insurance, you better get some kind of a permanent life plan, a universal, or it could be a whole life, Uh, you know, because term lives, they term out, right? Um, They're great when you're younger. I remember uh, when I got married, I had a wife and uh, ended up having two kids. The term insurance came into play uh, just from a peace of mind point of view. It was very inexpensive. And then, you know, as time went on, I started lacking in some permanent life insurance. And um, because I want to have that uh, while I'm insurable and all that. So you can get term insurance. A lot of these plans, they have what they call final expense whole life, all right? And, you know, a lot of those will cover you at, let's starting at age 45 to 89, 90. And um, those are like smaller face amounts, all right? So when I say that a death benefit is, I don't know, where 2000 comes in, that's not a whole lot, but they'll go up to 50000 Right, and those are all normally simplified underwriting type policies. So, getting right back to everything I've discussed, they're easy to, uh, you know, it's just a few questions. I mean, so if you've had, you know, cancer or heart attacks or, you know, um, something that a lot of times going to get just a permanent plan might be more difficult, uh, these kind of plans are set up like that to get you insured. You know, I mean, um, the other thing is what they call graded whole life, and those go from age 18 to 89. And that's like having a $10,000 to $150,000 policy. So when they say graded, graded means that, um, and I find this interesting because um, if you die in the first year, right? You pay a premium. They're going to give you back like, uh, 10% of your premium back, right? Um, you're not going to get the full death benefit right away. 
okay, but they grade it out over a period of time. Uh, you know, usually it's five years, and then after that, or it could be months, just depending, and then they're going to pay the full death benefit. Uh, a lot of times there are no medical questions to that, um, right? But, you know, if if you feel like you're going to, you know, you're going to die within the first year. You know, a lot of pilot people would think of getting their policy and uh, getting something in place. Well, you know, these policies are going to basically, they're going to pay your premium back. But if you have it long enough and you don't die, then, of course, it'll pay out a full death benefit. You know, I, I haven't done a lot in that, but I know there are, you know, those types of policies that are out there, um, you know, so... Whoever your professional insurance agent is, advisor, your long-term care insurance expert, uh, they're going to be able to um, find something for you. You know, the other thing um, I, I had just thought about right now when it comes to home health care, there actually is a policy, they call it a membership, but what it does, you can buy into getting uh, so many hours per week they kind of, I like it because they call it like a bronze, silver, gold, platinum. Well, you know, being around ballroom dancing, uh, guess what? That's the levels. Uh, so um, what that means is that if you buy a bronze plan, they're going to give you a set number out um, of, um, you know, home health care hours. Uh, they're going to pay you so much. And what they'll do is, uh, you know, and if you go with platinum, you know, you're going to get a lot of hours. And they roll over. If you don't use them, let's just, and, and they'll even give you discounts in the first four years where, you know, I mean, if you take the policy out at, let's just say, 60, 65 as an example, every year, whatever that premium is for that gold plan, they're, they'll take 10% off it if you don't use it. All right. Um, it's a nice feature. I like it because there's no medical questions to it. Absolutely no age limit to it. <laughs> right. Um, and there's no gender, right? Male, female, it doesn't matter. You're going to pay for a set amount. Uh, and then there's certain elimination periods they have after you use uh, a certain amount of the hours, you know, and then uh, and then it keeps going until you use all your um, hours up. All right, um, very cost effective, and uh, you know I also understand. I didn't personally write it, but somebody uh, over a hundred years old was able to get one of those plans. Right, so if people are struggling with certain uh, health issues. Know, um, as long as they can get around on their own without uh, needing somebody else to help them, right, where they can actually move and get around, they're going to get covered. So keep that in mind. Anyhow, I wanted to just kind of summarize things for you that um, there's a lot of options today, you know, with 10,000 baby boomers a day. This is becoming uh, very important and very uh, meaningful to families and just as much in the business market. You know, I, I just talked about these kinds of plans. You can, if you're a company, you know, let's just say you have 10 employees, uh, you could do a list bill or, you know, you could figure out a way to at least bring some attention to these types of plans. It's going to benefit um, for sure you're employed, but it's also going to benefit you. All right. There's peace of mind knowing that they have something in place and you're able to offer it. And, you know, depending on the carrier, you know, you can, uh, offer that as a voluntary benefit also, you know, um, you're not paying for it, but you're going to, you're going to make it available. So, um, things to think about there. Um, if you, want to, you have any questions, I can always be reached at, my email is VIP at variousinsuranceplanning.com. 
Go to my website, variousinsuranceplanning.com. I, this is one of my podcasts. A lot of times I have experts talking about all the different types of services when it comes to life insurance, annuities, and long-term care insurance in the individual and work site. I want to make myself available for you. If I don't have the answer, I deal with a lot of experts also. All right, and we will get the answer. We're here to serve and make a difference for you. And with that being said, um, I want you to enjoy your Labor Day weekend. Make great things happen. Be safe. And God bless.